Welcome to our chapel, scholars. We open our ears and say, Speak, O Lord, to make us generous as we think about the widow's giving in our Bible story this week. Please uh, worship with me, participate with me, say these words out loud. Grace to you, Hope Scholars. Grace to you, Pastor Steinberg. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's fold our hands and pray to our God. Dear God, you've been so generous to us, so we ask you to be generous to us once again and send your Spirit as we worship you. Open our ears to hear of your love and open our minds to change our activities and serve you even better. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let's say our key Bible passage together. The Lord is trustworthy in all He promises and faithful in all He does. Psalm 145, verse 13. This week we've been looking at self-sacrifice. And maybe you give up some things for some people and you don't get everything you want. Maybe you choose to support people. You give up things for your classmates or your sister and brother or whomever, but you and I don't do it perfectly. We're, we're a little bit greedy. We like to hang on to things for ourselves or we do things for other people and sacrifice hoping to get something in return. We fall short and so let's join to confess our sin and hear that we are forgiven. Join with me. Dear God, I am sinful. I do not always sacrifice for others and you. I hang on to my money more easily than I use it for others. Forgive my sin because of Jesus. God loves you and forgives you because of Jesus. Jesus died to pay for your sin, and he sacrificed himself in your place. As God's children, he now gives you power to live for him. Amen? Amen. God's message for you is, be generous like the widow. And when he's calling you to be generous, he doesn't just talk about how you give up stuff, but to do it for the same reason as that widow. Just recall the story. Uh, it's short. Jesus and his disciples were hanging around the temple, doing some people watching, <clears throat> and they saw some rich people come on in and give big gifts in the temple. Keep the temple going, pay for sacrifices, whatever. And they saw this old lady, a widow, whose husband had died, who didn't have much of any money, and she came in, and she brought a couple itty-bitty, I don't know if you can see this, little bitty pennies. I mean, just little copper coins. And um, they were called mites. They weren't worth very much at all. But it's really all the money she had, Jesus said later. Now, nobody else probably noticed. They probably thought, oh, this little old lady, isn't that cute? But Jesus said she gave more than everybody else. Jesus could see that she was giving because she knew God had given her everything. And so fearlessly, she gave generously to support the work of God. She, she just had to do it, right? Maybe she'd have had relatives and friends say, oh, you don't need to do anything. You don't have to do it. But she wanted to do it. And that's why Jesus saw her self-sacrifice and praised it. Now, with that story, we think about how we give to others, how we give to family members, and how we support the work of God in His church. Sometimes churches are known for asking for money, 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 money. And sometimes there are some corrupt churches and pastors that do that. But that doesn't mean we aren't supposed to support the work of the gospel. So let me ask you this. True or false, the more you give to God, the more God loves you. True or false? Is that, is that true? Is that false? Is that true? Is that false? What do you think? The more you give to God, the more God loves you. The answer is that's, that's false. Because you can't get God to love you anymore. He loved you before you're even around. John 3, 16 that we say every week in chapel reminds us, God so loved the world. He, he, he chose to love the world. It's too late. He already sent Jesus to pay for your sins. He can't love you anymore. You can't get God to love you. So why do you give? Why do you sacrifice? Well, let me ask you another true or false question. True or false? The more you love God for loving you, the more you want to give to God. Is that true? Or is that false? The more you love God for loving you, the more you want to give to God. That is true. That when you realize that, that God has given up everything, He sent Jesus to be your Savior, He sacrificed Himself on the cross, so we're God's children forever. We have eternal riches. The more we realize that and know that, the more we just have to find a way to give back to God. We do that with, with, with serving Him and using our time and talents, but also with our money, that's, that's our time and talents put in concrete form. It's a way that we can give, and we can give directly to a church. We can give to His ministry. We also can give to people in need. Those are all ways, and we want to do them all. 
I mean, giving isn't just exclusively to a church, but it's not supposed to exclude that either. So we want to see the widow and follow her example and find a way to give to God. And, and I think sometimes when you're in middle school or you're in grade school, people think, oh, you don't need to give. You, know, you can give later when you have real money, and you don't have that much money after all. That's not what it's about. It's about you finding uh, love that God has given you and just, I just got to give. And, and maybe you don't have much money, so you give from what you have. Um, I think that's, that's what God is calling you to do now, not to wait later, not to use an excuse, but to give to God in a way that no one else knows but simply because you love Jesus. If you are generous and nobody knows it except God, that's beautiful. That's the way the widow did. She came and she didn't make a big show. So my challenge for you is to find a way to give and give up and sacrifice just to show God glory and let nobody else know about it. What a challenge. What a great thing to do. And, and that power comes from what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He's done the be best sacrifice ever. You can never outgive Jesus. But that's your motivation to find a way to give for him. So let's review what the story teaches us. First of all, God gave us more than we can ever give. He outgave us when he sent Jesus to be our Savior, made us his children. God loves a cheerful giver. I mean, he loves us all, but boy, he, the Bible says he loves that when people serve him and just willingly want to give, not because they're forced to or they, they feel guilty or a church makes them, but when you just do it because you want to, that's amazingly spectacular. True giving is giving from the heart from what God has given us. So God doesn't ask you to give something you don't have. If he's given you talents, use your talents. He's, if, if he's given you money, give money. If you have time, use time. Whatever your opportunity is, that's what God calls you to give from. And finally, God wants us to sacrifice all that we have for him. Not just 10%, not just, all of us is, is meant to be a living sacrifice giving back to God. All because Jesus was a true sacrifice for us. So if you know that Jesus has sacrificed everything for you and you want to give back and sacrifice for him, let me hear you say amen. Amen indeed. Let's say that passage that reminds us of why we can give back to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for giving us everything in Jesus. For giving us eternal life, for giving us our family, for giving us food every day, a place to live, a place to sleep, a school, everything. We praise you for that and we ask you to continue to soften our hearts and give us opportunities to give to other people and give to your ministry. Lord, we, we ask you to help us be made generous. Lord, watch over us. Help us continue to go forward in this school year. Uh, help us train um, and be that Just be a Christian school that shines for you. We ask you to send your angels to protect us and watch over us in all time. In Jesus' name we pray. And now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen? Amen. Thanks for taking the time and worshiping uh, Jesus along with me. Um, you know, in this, this uh, virtual chapel, it would be real easy for you not to do this. So if you really did this today, it's a beautiful thing because you just chose to be generous with your time and sacrifice it because Jesus is worth it. God's blessings to you.